Well, yeah, lovely to meet you, John. Um, Could you explain a bit about um, tonight, a psychology talk? Um, what will you be giving us a taste of? I mean, what, what sort of things will you be talking about? I suppose tonight I, uh, I'm supposed to talk about sport, um, which I will do to some extent. Um, the benefits physically, psychologically. Um, I, I'm a big fan of sport when done properly because I think it's, it's near therapeutic. There's, there's studies like meta-analysis of therapy, right, of different types of therapy. And what they found is that it, and although most therapists won't admit this, it just, it doesn't matter what kind of therapy you're doing because there are some core things involved in therapy. Um, engaging in a, in a, a system or, or scheme that you believe in, uh, whether it's, you know, the standard kind of humanistic or all the way over to the rather off-kilter bioenergetics or whatever, as long as you buy into the scheme, that's, that's an important aspect of the therapeutic process. As long as you feel that there's an expert across the table from you, that's part of the process. As long as you feel like that aspect, expert is there to help you, that's part of the process. So when you start adding these things up, you suddenly realize sport done well with a great coach is exactly that. A scheme that you can buy into, an expert there in front of you, someone who's there ostensibly to help you develop and learn. It's all there. So it, it, it's almost literally a parallel to therapy, especially for populations that are underserved in terms of mental health. You think about the people who are drawn to sports, it, it's men, for starters, who don't take up mental health services in, in other ways, or at least they undertake those as well. The truth is that sport is delivered in a way that is emotionally illiterate, intellectually incurious, deadeningly dull. And so most people's experience of sport is, is there's a rare few who fit perfectly because of the way their body works or the way their mind works, who fit into this elite sport track and they take off regardless of how terrible it is. And the rest of us feel wounded by sport, made to feel fat or, or bad or wrong or not committed or whatever it might be. There's a study by the CPSU, the Child Protection and Sport Unit, I think in 2013, which looked at the different types of abuse and harm that come in sport. And people are usually in sport, they talk about sexual harm as being the big deal because it's um, headline catching. But really, not that it's good, but you're talking about two or three percent of people, depending on gender, who suffer that kind of victimization. But then this study also looked at emotional harm. And not just, I feel bad because the coach said something I didn't like about me, but serious, ongoing, daily, spreading into weekly and monthly and yearly denigration verbally. Um, and the numbers were up at 75% of young people experienced that. I mean, that's got to be devastating, especially when it can be the reverse. It can be this amazing resilience enhancing experience when done well and when in an environment that feels safe and nurturing and, and challenging for sure but supportive it can have great positive impacts on, on people with depression and anxiety and stress related uh, issues so it just it's amazing how when you look at what it actually delivers versus what it could deliver it's really disappointing is that something you've ever you know, experienced um sporting career i mean i played professionally if you play professionally you experience the gamut um, you don't play professional sports for fun. You may have fun playing sport, but it's not the same thing. And certainly the people who pay you aren't interested in whether you're having fun, they're interested in whether you are doing well. And most coaches don't equate uh, altering their interpersonal style to, for an individual to helping them perform. They just think if you're being paid, you should just do it right. So yeah, I've had terrible coaches, and I've had great coaches within professional sport, but in my amateur sporting, coming up through, and I'm really talking about PE lessons and things like that, I just had the worst experiences. Uh, and that's mirrored by, um, sadly, my children who've had terrible experiences with it, um, kids who come to my community centre in Manchester, we hear horror stories about their PE teachers, we hear horror stories about their coaches and other sports. It's devastating. I think it's more damaging the fact that we, we create a context for sports for amateurs that is completely different than what we would, we would accept in other areas. Um, if a child's French teacher stood eight inches uh, from
from their face and was screaming to them about, I don't know, prepositions while their spittle was hitting their face, that would be child abuse. If a coach does that same thing, that's forceful coaching. And not only that, the context is so different that when it's in a sporting context that happens, parents will stand on sidelines and watch and they will berate their children afterwards for inspiring the eye of their coach. So it will be their fault. Whereas if that happens in a classroom setting, I mean, the walls would tumble down at that school. That would just be deemed totally unacceptable. So we've actually created a context in sport that is, you know, not just underperforming, but is actually dangerous, I think.